This is a first in a series of videos where we're going to discuss psychometrics. Now, I urge you to consider purchasing the Psychometrics Without Tears book from HVAC Excellence. And I'll put the link to the book or to the HVAC Excellence site in the comments. But um, this, in this first portion, we're just going to talk about what Psychometrics is. We're going to talk a little bit about air in general. Okay, now, Psychometrics is a study of air dynamics. Air is a colorless, odorless, and tasteless substance. Air is 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen. Other gases make up the last 1%. Air can also contain water in both the liquid and the vapor states. Water in the air is a constantly changing between liquid and vapor. So psychometrics is how this all comes together and as we go through this, we're going to find out why it's important to the HVAC technician to understand this. In the HVAC industry, we have to provide comfort. That's the whole purpose of HVAC. Providing comfort can involve heating, cooling, exhausting, ventilating, humidifying, and dehumidifying. So what do we really know about air? How much, air does, how much does the air in the typical room weigh? Consider a room that's at sea level, that is 10 foot wide, 15 foot long, with an 8 foot ceiling. If all of the air in that room was placed on a scale, what would the total weight of the air be? Okay, now why is this important? Because we have to move air to cool and heat buildings. The room volume is the first thing we have to calculate. 10 by 15 by 8 equals 1,200 and that's cubic feet. 1,200 cubic feet times 0 0.075 pounds per cubic foot gives us 90 pounds. Okay, so one cubic feet of foot of air is 0 0.075 pounds. We have to understand dry and wet bulb temperatures as well. A dry bulb temperature is the temperature reading that is displayed on a traditional thermometer. It does not take moisture into account. Okay, The wet bulb temperature is the temperature that is obtained from a thermometer that has a wet bulb. So a dry bulb thermometer could be showing one reading in the same room as a wet bulb thermometer with a wick over the end of it. Okay, the wet bulb thermometer takes moisture into account. The wet bulb thermometer can be equal to or less than the dry bulb temperature, but it will never be greater than it. Okay, remember, as water evaporates, it cools whatever it's evaporating from. That's why the wet bulb temperature is going to be equal to or less than the dry bulb temperature, but never greater than that. The psychrometer is a sling psychrometer. It's an instrument used to measure wet bulb and dry bulb temperatures. Some psychrometers can also measure relative humidity. Here's two examples of the thousands of different style psychrometers that are available on the market. Back in the day before digital psychrometers started coming around, you used to use a sling psychrometer. It had two thermometers in it, okay, on this little handle here, okay. One thermometer had a wet bulb, had a wick that you used to have to put distilled water on it, and then you would twirl this around in the air to cause air to go across the thermometers. Got two different readings. Now we have the digital psychrometers that you just put this into the airstream, the end, and it will actually take both wet and dry bulb readings. This is just an example of the output of a digital thermometer. This is the Testo thermometers, okay? The Testo smart probes. We had one in the return air, one in the supply air. It gives us the relative humidity, okay, for both sets and it can also figure out our sub temperature differences and so on and so forth. Okay, just one example. Another example, again, Testo probes. This was outside. Okay, 88.7 degree air, that's dry bulb temperature, 75.2 wet bulb, 
and we have a 54.1 or 54.4 percent relative humidity. Wet bulb depression is the difference between the wet bulb and the dry bulb temperatures. The lower the wet bulb de temper depression, the higher the relative humidity is. Okay, so if I go back here, we have, okay, a te dry bulb temperature of 74.4, a wet bulb temperature of 65.9. Okay, our wet bulb depression is the difference between these two numbers. Okay, so the lower the wet bulb depression, the higher the relative humidity is. And that's because in high relative humidity, water does not evaporate off the wick of the wet bulb thermometer that quickly. Okay, so here... What we have is we have our dry bulb temperature, okay, we have our wet bulb depression, and from there we can figure out what the relative humidity is. So if I have a dry bulb temperature of 80 degrees and a wet bulb depression of 1, which means my wet bulb would be 79 degrees, we have a 96% relative humidity. Okay, wet bulb, so here's another example. Dry bulb temperature 60 degrees. Wet bulb temperature, 50 degree. Wet bulb depression is 60 minus 50, which is 10 degrees. Relative humidity will be 49%. Let's look at it on the chart. We have our 60 degree dry bulb, wet bulb depression of 10, and the, where those two come together is 49% relative humidity. So to calculate humidity, wet bulb and dry bulb temperatures both have to be taken. And this is what the digital thermometer does with the digital psychrometer does behind the scenes. Uses those dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures to find a relative humidity. The term absolute humidity is used to represent the actual amount of moisture in an air sample. Absolute humidity is expressed in grains per pound of air or pounds of moisture per pound of air. 7,000 grains equals one pound of moisture. That's a very important number to remember as we move forward. 7,000 grains equals one pound of moisture. The term relative humidity, RH, is used to represent the ratio of the actual amount of moisture in an air sample to the moisture capacity of the sample. So RH is the absolute humidity divided by the moisture capacity of the air times 100 percent. So if an air sample holds 40 grains of moisture and the air sample can hold 80 grains of moisture maximum, we have 40 divided by 80 times 100 which is 50 percent. Now how do you find what the maximum is? We'll get there. Okay that's you we're going to use a thing called the psychometric chart to figure that out but it's based on the weight of the air. And again, absolute humidity is expressed in grains per pounds of air or pounds of moisture per pound of air. 7,000 grains equals one pound. Okay, now when air is in equilibrium, in other words, at, at a static temperature, the rate of evaporation is equal to the rate of condensation. So we have a constant balance, okay? We have water vapor, we have liquid vapor, water. This is all in the air, okay? So the, it's an equilibrium. It's an equal percentage. So as it evaporates, it also condenses. This is in a static environment, no temperature change. When air is heated, the rate of evaporation is greater than the rate of condensation. The amount of liquid water in the air sample drops and the relative humidity decreases. That's why when we're heating in the winter months, we feel dry. The amount of liquid water in the air sample drops and the relative humidity decreases. When air is cooled, the rate of condensation is greater than the rate of evaporation. 
the amount of liquid water in the air sample rises and the relative humidity increases. So if I go back to a slide that I showed a few minutes ago with, oh, where was it? There it is. If I go back here, this is a cooling system. So my return air temperature is 74.4 degrees. My supply air temperature is 59.1 degrees. Notice what is happening to the relative humidity. Even though the system is dehumidifying, the relative humidity of my return air is 64.6. .6. The relative humidity of my supply air is 83.8. .8. So when we go back to the slide where we were just talking about this, okay, when air is cooled, the rate of condensation is greater than the rate of evaporation. So the amount of liquid water in the air sample rises and the relative humidity increases. Does this mean it's getting wet? No, it really isn't. It's just the way the relative humidity increases. Okay, And a properly operating air conditioning system will take that liquid water and drain it away. The dew point temperature is the temperature at which moisture begins to condensate out of the air. The example picture here is a glass, cold glass of water sitting in a warmer room on a counter. You notice all the, dew, all the moisture on the outside of the glass. That's the water that's condensing out of the air, and it will eventually form a puddle. Well, let's take a look at our example for heating and air conditioning. We have a cooling coil. This is a picture of an A-coil. Okay, the bottom side of it. When this gets cold, it's going to act the same way as this glass. The moisture is going to condense on this cooling coil and should run down and collect in the drip pan or the condensate drain pan that's around the bottom of the coil and be piped away. The term density is used to describe the weight per unit volume of a substance. Density is as expressed in pounds per cubic foot. That's LB slash FT3. In the world of psychrometrics, the substance always being evaluated is air. In other types of science and in other things, we might be talking about water. But in psychrometrics, the substance being evaluated is air. At standard atmospheric conditions, the density of air is 0 0.075 pounds per cubic foot. And that is a number you have to remember. 0 0.075 pounds per cubic foot. As an air sample is heated, the density of the air decreases. As an air sample is cooled, the density of air increases. So at standard atmospheric conditions, one cubic foot of air weighs 0 0.075 pounds. As the air is heated, the density goes down. As the air is cooled, the density goes up. The term specific volume is used to describe the volume of a substance per unit weight. It's expressed in cubic foot per pound. At standard atmospheric conditions, the specific volume of air is 13.33 cubic feet per pound. Okay, so what, if I want one pound of air at standard atmospheric conditions, I need 13.33 cubic feet of air. And just another way to show it. Okay. As an air sample is heated, the specific volume of air increases. As an air sample is cooled, the specific volume of air decreases. Specific volume times density equals 1. Now, here's a way to tell to actually see this. Take a balloon, blow it up. Put it in a freezer. Okay, you'll see that the balloon gets smaller. Take it out of the freezer, let it warm up, the balloon will reinflate. Put that balloon in a warmer environment, it actually may overinflate and burst. But the specific volume times the density is 1. 
The term enthalpy is used to describe the heat content of a substance. Enthalpy is always expressed in BTUs per pound. The enthalpy increases as the air is heated or humidified. The enthalpy decreases as the air is cooled or dehumidified. Okay, so in part one, we've talked about some of the basic principles of air. We've talked about volume, we've talked about um, enthalpy, we've talked about um, the specific volume, we've talked about the weight of air. The one cubic foot of air is 0 0.075 pounds. Okay, we've talked about, again, density. We've talked about dew point temperatures. We've talked about rate of condensation. Okay, we've talked about relative humidity. We've talked about wet bulb and dry bulb temperatures. Okay, so at this point, we've talked about all of the basic principles of psychrometrics. But everything else we do builds upon what we've covered in this presentation.